this week's uh, Facebook Live. My name is Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, known across social media as DB Psychology. So, um, this week I was talking about um, encouraging healthy sibling relationships, but um, having reread a lot of the tips, there's eight tips in total. Um, you know, any of these tips are actually good parenting tips as well. Um, so. It doesn't matter if you haven't if you've only got one child these are relevant to you as well you you know you can use these um for any child of any age so um let's get talking siblings um i've covered sibling rivalry so and i've covered it as in children and i've covered it in adults because you know it is something that can continue on into adulthood between siblings and um, it can be very very toxic and i've given you a lot of tips and hints about how to deal with that and particularly if you're dealing with it and i know um you know all into the holiday period and things like that and we're linking up maybe with people we don't see that often um even if it is online um you know we're still interacting with them and even online it can be quite toxic um the comments and things like that can be quite toxic so you know do check those out if that is an issue for your family um you know siblings spend a huge amount of time together and this creates um you know in a very intense bond between them and um you know i know from my own family um and i know from looking at my dad's family in particular because it was a very big family you know they always knew what to say to one another to rile one another up even as adults it was fascinating to watch um as for me as a child to look at these these people um it could have been why i was so interested early on in psychology um but it is very very intense and and you know as a parent we we want to get they, we want them to be you know happy healthy but we also want them to create this unity that you know okay we have different interests we have different you know we've gone off maybe as adults and you know have uh you know friends and interests and everything else but there is if if in times of trouble you have somebody you can call on and that's really what as parents what we want to really encourage that there's always somebody there it doesn't always happen unfortunately it doesn't always happen and we also have to remember too what i'm talking about here doesn't just necessarily mean um you know you have to be biologically related so you have adopted kids you've got blended families now so it, it doesn't matter where they are if they're they're together they're together for a long enough time they're siblings and they become bonded so therefore you know they're influenced they're influenced not only by us as parents but by other people um you know birth order i suppose is one of the biggest influences and um, that we would all know about is the classic one you know where you come in terms of birth order and that gets adjusted when you have a blended family there's an adjustment period needed there because maybe an eldest child in one family is no longer the eldest child because a family has come together and uh, you know two families have come together and now maybe there's another child and that child now becomes the middle child there is an adjustment period there um, and that's a huge influence over somebody's life personality different personalities you're going to have personality clashes um even within families um parental treatment parenting style um again huge influences over the child but other family members can also have a huge influence over the child and significant others outside the family like a significant teacher maybe in somebody's life you often hear about people as adults talking about that um so even these outside influences will come in have an influence on the child and then of course it, that ripples out it's like a ripple effect it will have a ripple effect out onto their relationship with their own siblings so how can you encourage you know healthy relationships but also like the as i said these tips can help you encourage a child any child um or a teen the first thing I say to you is understand your parenting style. Um, now, I've done a whole training on this um, in um, another video, so do check it out. Um, and, you know, there's a blog and a video on that. So go and have a check it, check that out. But even think about how you were parented, because how you you were parented, we that's how we learn to parent our own kids. And unless we make a very conscious decision 
to look at that examine it reflect on it and change it you know we will use those styles on our own children so you know how a child is parented very much affects their entire life we know it affects them mentally and physically you know you can get from um their weight to their emotional well-being their self-confidence their self-esteem all of that is influenced by our parents by the parenting style so do check that out um because it, it is one of the most influential um factors in how you know your children interact with one another but also how they develop mentally and physically um the second one i would say to you is understand the stages of a child development um now you don't have to go into that in great detail um you just have to have a basic idea and don't get caught up in it either an awful lot of people will get caught up in it and have these expectations children grow and develop both mentally and physically at different rates their guidelines really think of them as guidelines these stages of child development as guidelines but they're important that you understand them because they can help you um pick up on different conditions um, and be aware of that um, you know you can then also realize uh, and set realistic goals and expectations for your child but as i said be careful how you use them um you know the classic one i suppose that we hear of is people comparing their children to other children in the class don't do that never do that every child is different they develop as i said at different rates so never compare and that's a very important point to remember never you compare even the siblings with one another don't compare just because one of your older children reached a certain milestone at a certain age and the other one didn't don't compare them never do that because each child is unique and will develop in their own way and that's very important the other thing is we tend to put expectations on children that um can be unrealistic so expecting a very small child you know a toddler to share before they're even aware that this object they have in their hand is in fact separate from their hand it's not just part of them an extension of their hand just like you're they they can see that you're an extension of them they don't see you as separate um so expecting them to share is is you know and they get angry with them you know isn't isn't good it's not good for the child um the same way with teens we put very high expectations on teens expecting them to be more grown up than they are when in fact their brain development doesn't actually fully occur until they're 26 years of age around 26 is when your brain develops but we put these high expectations on kids to be much older than they actually are you're setting kids up to fail even before they try so you know think about that really stop and think about that in the context of your own child's development and maybe just maybe that might help you understand conflicts that are going on in the home and um, help you understand your responses to um you know what's going on sorry i just want to take a drink of water um the next next point number three would be expect that there's going to be conflict expect there's going to be some sort of sibling rivalry because it happens it happens even among adults if you think about it you know you're in working in an organization there's going to be a little bit of conflict there maybe you don't like somebody um there will be a certain level of conflict um you know this home is where kids learn their place in the world um you know they're learning to share objects they're learning to express their opinion in a healthy way you can encourage that by listening to them you know you can you know home should be a safe place bullying should never be tolerated um basic family rules i call them the house rules help really does help with to um you know establish the boundaries and they need boundaries teens need boundaries children need boundaries toddler even toddlers need boundaries to understand you know the give and take appropriately um and they these rules need to be flexible and changeable as the child develops so you can't have the same rules 
for a child as you would for a teen they have to be flexibility and even within the rules um i give one example in the rules of um you know where uh, a teen is um obeying the curfew consistently obeying the curfew doing well in school expectations everything's going fine and then there's a school dance we've all been to them or there's a local dance and they want to go to this dance hopefully when lockdown is lifted um the um you know that they get that flexibility the curfew is lifted a little bit you give them a little bit of flexibility there in terms if everything else is okay then they get the flexibility to stay up that much later stay out that much later and go and attend the dance when eventually these things are back on again um i also suggest that there's no more than 10 rules in the house and that you know they're based around your own values so you need to sit down and examine that what are my values what are my partner's values come together and sing off the same hymn sheet because you're trying to instill these values into your child um and these values will set their boundaries for them set healthy boundaries hopefully for them um and therefore you know you need a great awareness of that of your own values and what you want and what boundaries you want to set with your children but they also need to realize that the house rules apply outside the house so for instance respect would be an obvious one that there is respect within the home but there's also respect in the school and in different organizations that they may be a team member of that that's and if they break those rule that rule then the house rules will apply they will be punished um but i say to you you know get the kids involved particularly seven eight year olds start from then getting them involved and helping you set the consequences for the house rules and um, for the simple reason kids can be quite good at coming up with consequences that are more relevant to them um and will feel more of a, like a punishment than you can come up with they're really good at doing that and they'll 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 think um think of things maybe you didn't think of, of for the consequences um, and it also shows them good communication um you know and you're showing them then how to negotiate and how to work through creating rules and values that are based on your values and boundaries that you want to set with them um number four is you know treat each child equally and uniquely now i think um, in the blog I mentioned about favoritism um I think parents go through that you know every parent has gone through that with the favorite um one child is the favorite um it is highly unfair um it does and can create resentment if it's allowed to run and it can damage your relationship with your other children um but it happens you know parents do this all the time um and you know it is something you need to examine and when you really do realize you're doing it then you need to stop doing it um you know every child has their own unique talents and gifts and needs and feelings and even if you aren't interested in their interests at least be willing to listen while they talk about them or go and support them while they take part in whatever it is um you know that's very very important that they feel you're at least interested you're showing them respect and that yeah that you turn up for the match or the dancing competition or just to see a recital or whatever it is when all these things happen again um that you're there supporting them that's what they want they want you to be there supporting them um and you know try and eliminate the i know it's hard but i do try and eliminate um, the favoritism i think the crowns episode on um the favorite child was very interesting so if you haven't seen that just go or you're not interested in watching the crown just go watch that episode because it really is um quite an interesting episode um in the recent se season of the crown um number five is to um build your child's self-esteem that's a pretty obvious one that's what our role as parents is you know we are there to build up their self-confidence self-esteem and um, as well as you know protect them um but you know a child with good self-esteem will be more open to learning they'll see their mistakes as learning opportunities not 
equating to I make a mistake, therefore I am a failure. We don't want to go down that road. That's a very bad road to go down. Um, you know, they, therefore they're willing to try again. Um, you know, they're proud of their achievements and they respect and trust themselves. Therefore, all of that equates to them also, you know, being proud of other people's achievement, achievements. They don't see it as unhealthy competition. They don't, they see each other, everybody as being equal, being respected, being, you know, I can, I can really get behind my friends, my family members, and I'm delighted that you won, whatever it is. Um, it's healthy. Um, it's healthy. It's what you're trying to do is recreate a healthy human being that sees and treats everybody with respect. Um, you know, and they they feel okay, even though I my opinion differ difference has I've never ah tongue tied. My opinion is different from yours. I will sit and I will listen, and I will argue the facts with you as to why my um you know my opinion matters why my opinion is the way it is and i will do that and home is the place to do that so my um my point to you there is you know allow them to express their opinion and as long as they're taking that seriously be willing to sit down and listen to them and allow them to express that opinion and argue the points with them in a healthy way argue it back and forward with the facts take the feelings out of it you know you're not there as a you know in competitive mode with them that's a very unhealthy relationship to have if you think you're the competition um so you know be willing to tolerate those opinions and allow them to express them where else are they going to learn how to do that but at home um number six is everyone is equal especially in arguments now this can be so hard because you know you can get caught up in the he said she said blame game um and the constant bickering oh that can be so bad i oh i i know it can be really bad the constant bickering particularly among younger children the constant bickering can be so hard on you try not to get caught up in that and if you feel your own anger rising it's time for you to take a step back it's time for you to go sit on the naughty step um you know everybody go off and calm down and it's basically right we're going to take a time out we're going to go calm down and then we're going to come back and talk about it we're not letting this go we're, we're just taking a time out and that's what everybody needs including you sometimes um and then if you have to talk to them individually before you talk to them together and don't get into the as i said the blame game or any sort of toxic shame or guilt because that's ugh, that's horrible um teach them to problem solve and good communication skills so using your eye words active listening you've got to demonstrate these yourself and we don't always learn these we don't always learn problem solving skills now i've done trainings on those on both of those in my mum's group so if you want to join that feel free there's a link in the description um, and you can join that and, and come in and, and take those trainings in your own time and i'll be there to bounce questions off um you know you're helping them to solve their differences uh, appropriately and of course it's going to be age appropriately small toddlers aren't going to have the communication ability um to be able to you know sit down and talk about their feelings or use i statements it's just not going to happen so you have to use this age appropriately of course um, and talk it out but the most important thing here i think is investigate what's really going on and i've talked about this before particularly in terms of, you know, sometimes a sibling can come home and take out their frustration or anger of something else that they've no control of. Maybe something a friend did on them or something um, it happened in school and they start to take it out on their other siblings. So you've got to go and investigate what really happened. And that's why I say to you, separate them, take a time out, chat to them individually and then bring it back to doing the you know the apologies and the communication skills the proper communication skills and problem solving it out you're teaching them problem solving it out together um number seven never force your child to be friends with their siblings or responsible for their siblings that's quite damaging that one um you know kids in families have different interests different friends different talents different hobbies 
gifts, whatever. There's a whole lot of differences there with kids. You trying to force them to be friends with one another, it's not going to work. You can't force it. You can only hope that they will develop this friendship and bond together. But, you know, the rule really there should be, okay, you have all these differences, you have all these different talents, you have all these different interests and hobbies, you have all these different friends, that's okay. But the rule of the house is we respect one another in the family, um, you know, and we support one another in the family. And that's um, what you your aim should be there, not trying to force them to come together. Um, number eight then is never allow the kids to play you off one another. Um, both of you should be singing off the same hymn sheet. You really should as parents. Um, if you're separated or divorced, then never, absolutely never make the child the go-between. I've seen so much damage done there um, when parents do that. And remember, you're not their friend. Okay, I don't care if they're adults. You've got adult children. You're not their friend. You can be friendly, but you're not their friend, their buddy. Okay, you're their parent. You will always be their parent. Um, you know, and remember too, particularly around this separation and divorce, you can't buy their love. You can't be, you know, the good parent and the bad parent. You can't do that. All you're doing there is damaging your relationship with your children. And they will they will cop on fairly quickly and they will play you and take the gifts they will you know play you off one another but at the end of the day when as they get older um you know they'll probably walk away and go yeah i don't want to be around that person and they'll they'll walk away from that that parent um so don't do it just don't do it it's not worth it um as i said you have to both sing off the same hymn sheet you um also have to have the same house rules um even if you've got two separate houses, you've got to be able to come together and have the same house rules in both houses. Um, any fighting, it's between the two of you and don't drag the kids into it. If you can't talk to one another, then, you know, there are mediators out there, there are solicitors, lawyers, whatever. That's who does the talking for you. If it's come to that, that's where, you know, that's dealt with, not the children. They're not messengers. Um, and if you feel you need help and you're really struggling, it's OK to reach out and ask for help if you're struggling as a parent um, or if you're stressed and anxious yourself. And you need to be looking after you and taking care of your own mental health and your own physical health first before you're able to give to somebody else. Um, and that includes your children. So don't think you have to push on through. Don't think you have to struggle on alone. You're not. A lot, a lot of parents struggle um so please reach out sooner rather than later and if you think there's something going on with your kids particularly children and teens better off reaching out you know and getting help sooner rather than later than leaving it and letting it run so i'm going to leave it there um and um Thank you all for listening as always. A little bit longer this week than usual. And thanks, Deirdre, for listening. Yes, children setting their own relevant punishment being better punishment. So true. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are really good at coming up with something that's much more relevant to them than, um, you know, than, than we as adults can come up with sometimes. Um, so I will talk to you all next week. And thank you all for listening. Stay safe.